for a closer look at the economies of Southern Africa, my colleague Owen Faircloth spoke with David Owiro. He's an independent economic and political analyst in Nairobi. He began by asking David about South Africa, which is struggling with weak economic growth and with rising debt. Well, as you know, there has been, uh, uh, South Africa has registered uh, quite low growth, uh, just about 1% uh, GDP growth. Um, and uh, th there has uh, been uh, generally an economic downtown, uh, downturn uh, in the country. And uh, this is uh, basically um, characterized by high inequality and, uh, um, of course, high unemployment. And what we've been seeing, of course, are uncertainties around uh, the issues around land uh, redistribution and uh, government policies uh, to remedy these solutions uh, haven't uh, perhaps gone far enough. We have a high unemployment problem. Uh, unemployment remains at about 28% uh, of the workforce. And we ha South Africa has the, uh, one of the highest uh, inequality rates uh, in the world. And so uh, it remains to be seen uh, how the future looks like. Uh, but of course, in spite of this uh, bad news, there's some, some positive in it in some sense, uh, because we're seeing uh, at least some investor confidence beginning to, to come in, uh, as uh, perhaps uh, Ramaphosa's government seeks to sort of allay fears around uh, the land uh, you know, uh, appropriation or expropriation uh, policies that they are considering. You mentioned the land redistribution a couple of times. Is that, do you see that as the, as the ultimate obstacle or the, the main obstacle to growth in South Africa? Uh, well, it might not be the main uh, obstacle, but it certainly is contributing to a lot of uncertainty. And the reason is that um, this is something that uh, much it, it is a very populist uh, stance that the, the South African government has taken. And uh, what we are seeing is that um, um, uh, this has sort of brought with it a lot of fears because uh, from the South African region, we saw the Zimbabwe, the way the Zimbabwe uh, ex experience went with it, with a lot of farmers losing uh, arable land and therefore resulting in actually a dip in agricultural output. And, uh, you know, there are some fears amongst uh, the major landowners, of course, that South Africa might also go down this way. And just briefly for us, David, one thing that South Africa and many other African economies could benefit for is more intra-African trade. We have this massive, massive, potentially huge new free trade agreement, Pan-African free trade agreement that would make the European Union look absolutely tiny. Uh, the problem is only, I think, 15 countries have ratified this. And the deadline for ratification is, is, I believe, March next year. So can this free trade agreement that sounds so promising, can it actually get off the ground? I believe it can. I mean, uh, at the launch of it, we had 44 countries already signing up. Uh, of course, it takes uh, 22 uh, economies or nations to, to achieve, to ratify it for it to be in effect. And so we are still seven, uh, we need seven more nations to come on board so that it can take effect. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, economists and a lot of African observers do indeed uh, acknowledge that uh, uh, the African uh, uh, free trade agreement actually could spur intra-African uh, trade. And that is actually the, uh, in, 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 some, in most cases, people view that that is actually the, the solution to Africa's industrialization. We know that Africa trades value-added, uh, more value-added products amongst its uh, neighbors uh, rather than with its traditional partners who are overseas. And so this could actually be one of the foundations towards achieving that industrialization uh, dream that Africa often has. And, and just briefly, David, you're in Kenya. Do people want this? And I ask that because free trade agreements aren't very popular, certainly on this side of the Atlantic with US President Trump. Uh, he doesn't really like free trade. He much prefers bilateral trade relationships. The UK is just about to pull out of a giant free trade area, the European Union. Do people in Kenya and indeed uh, across Africa, do they really want this? Uh, I believe they do. Uh, and uh, this uh, actually from sentiments of uh, big business owners who have businesses spanning across many countries within Africa. They do see the importance of having a, a regional trade agreement that would uh, allow them greater market access. Uh, but when it comes to the population and to the actual citizens of this country, uh, little is known uh, about uh, what is actually going on at the regional and continental level. And so this is often the, uh, the, the fallacy of uh, these uh, trade governance uh, arrangements that countries enter into. 
there is uh, often very little awareness uh, from the citizenry level on what is going on. Uh, and so ultimately you can say that uh, to some extent they lose out because they don't know which opportunities exist for them. The other thing that perhaps for me is discouraging is that alongside this continental wide free trade agreement, there was, a move, there was a, uh, also an agreement for free uh, labor movement, which perhaps would have benefited most, uh, most capital, uh, human capital in the, in the continent. And uh, it is sad to say that not a lot of countries have signed on to this, and uh, therefore this sort of remains somewhat moribund, somewhat stuck uh, in the loop, and therefore uh, will be left behind in terms of the kind of reforms that could actually result in uh, more or better increased uh, business uh, employment opportunities for Africa's labor force.